In this video, you're gonna learn how to transform parent functions, specifically parent functions that are in this form or this form. Now, a lot of times students get a little bit confused because they're not sure whether they do the horizontal shift first or the horizontal stretch or compress first, and that's what we're gonna clear up in this video. So when it's in this form here where you can see the B value is factored out, what you wanna do is you actually wanna take the B into consideration first, meaning that you're going to either stretch horizontally or compress horizontally the X coordinates of your graph. And then you're gonna follow that up by shifting it left or right, and that's what the H indicates here. Now, the important thing to remember is that the number grouped with the X, okay, in both cases here, the B and the H are grouped with the X, they're gonna have the opposite effect on the graph. So what I mean by that is that this H here, see if it's X minus H, it's actually gonna to go to the right H. If it's X plus H, it's gonna to go to the left H. It's gonna shift. Whereas with the B, if like B is greater than one, like say for example two, it would actually divide all the X coordinates by two. If it was like a half, it would actually multiply the X coordinates by two. So it has the opposite effect. It has the, the reciprocal effect, this B value. And then here, this coefficient A, this is our vertical stretch or compress. If A is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch. If it's between zero and one, it's gonna be a vertical shrink or a vertical compress. And if it's negative, it's gonna reflect over the X axis. So it's a reflection if it's negative. And then lastly, the K, that's gonna be our vertical shift up and down. Now, if it's in this form here, what you can see is that this B value is like distributed in, it's not factored out. And so when it's in this form, what you wanna do is you actually want to do the horizontal shift first and then follow it by the horizontal stretch or compress. We're gonna go through a number of examples. I'll show you how this works. The first example we're gonna work with is the absolute value function. And you're familiar with this graph already. It's a V-shaped graph. If you're not familiar, just go ahead and make a table, pick some negative values, zero, and some positive values, and you're gonna get that V-shaped graph. But what I wanna compare and show you is the difference between graphing it in this form, g of x equals the absolute value of two times x minus two, and g of x equals the absolute value of the quantity two x minus four. Now you might be saying, Mario, these are exactly the same, right? If I distribute the two, that's two X minus four, which is exactly what we have here. And you'd be exactly right. And we're gonna end up with the exact same graph. But when you describe the transformations, the actual steps that you go through are gonna be different. So let me see if I can explain. So in this form, you can see that that two is factored out, okay? So when it's factored out, it's in this form here, which means that we actually wanna take the horizontal stretch or compress into a account first. So what we're gonna do is we're not actually gonna multiply the X values by two. This has the opposite effect. We're gonna divide the X values by two. So it's gonna be a horizontal shrink. So what that means now is this point here is gonna stay exactly where it's at. But this point here, see how the X coordinate is two? It's gonna be shrinking. So that means that this point is actually gonna be at one now. Same thing over here. See how this is at negative two? A horizontal shrink, this is gonna put this at negative one. So what you can see here is we've got a graph that's been horizontally compressed. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this part second, the uh, H value. So we're gonna say this is gonna shift not minus two, not left two, it has the opposite effect when it's a group of the X like that. It's actually gonna shift right two. So each of these points, I'm just gonna go right two, this point over here, right two, uh, this point over here, right two. And so you can see that's our uh, final graph right there. Okay, now let's take a look at letter B. G of X equals the absolute value of two X minus four. Notice now that the two is not factored out. This is all you know, multiplied together here. What we wanna do is in this form right here is we actually wanna do the horizontal shift first. So the minus four actually tells us that this graph here is gonna be shifted right four. So this vertex here is now gonna be at one, two, three, four right here. And you can see then it's going up uh, with a slope of one. Okay, like this, same thing over here. Okay, so that's our shifting right four. Okay, now the two we wanna take into account, remember this has the opposite effect on the graph. This is actually not gonna multiply the X values by two, but actually divide the X coordinates by two. So this point here, instead of being at four, is now gonna be at two. Okay, this point over here, which is at uh, zero is zero divided by two is still zero, so that's gonna stay exactly where it's at. And then take, for example, another point here, let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, comma, uh, 
2, it's a little bit high here. This is actually going to be at 3, 2, which is right there. So you can see now that the graph is actually going to look like this. And if you look closely, these two graphs are exactly the same. See how we're at uh, vertex is at 2 and it's going up like so. Same thing here. It's vertex is at 2 and it's going up at the same rate. Okay, example number two, we're going to work with the square root function, and you know what the shape of that graph looks like. It's kind of like a parabola on its side, just the top half there. So what we're going to do is letter A and letter B, again, look at these two functions. You might say to yourself, well, Mario, it looks like they're exactly the same. If I distribute this one-third, I'm getting one-third x plus one, the same as example A here. But the process of graphing these, the process of describing the transformations is going to be different for both of these. So let me see how you, show you how you would work these. So for this one, notice that the B value is not factored out. So that means it's in this form here. And when it's in this form, what we have to do is do our horizontal shift first. So this plus one is actually going to take this graph here and it's going to shift all the x coordinates left one. So instead of being here at uh, zero, zero, we're going to be over here at negative one. Instead of being over here, we're going to shift to the left one. We're going to be right there. Instead of being at four, two, we're going to be at three, two. So everything just shifted left. 1. Okay, now the 1 third, this is going to have an effect on the horizontal stretch or compress, but remember this actually has the reciprocal effect. So it looks like you're dividing the x values by 3. You're actually going to be multiplying the x values by 3. So this is actually a horizontal stretch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the x values and multiply them by 3. So instead of being at negative 1 here, we're going to be at negative 3 right here. Instead of being at 0, well 0 times 3 is still going to be 0, so that stays where it's at. And then this one over here, instead of being at uh, positive 3, you're going to be at positive 9. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the y value is going to stay the same though. Okay, so we're just changing the, the x coordinates. And you can see this is a horizontal stretch. Okay, now for letter B, you can see that this B value has been factored out. And so what that tells us is that we actually have to do the horizontal stretch or compress first, followed by the horizontal shift. So what does the one-third do? Well, again, just like we talked about over here, it's going to have the reciprocal effect. It's actually going to multiply the x values by 3. 0 times 3 is still going to be 0. Uh, 1 times 3 is going to be 3. So 1, 2, 3. Again, the y value stays the same. And over here, we're at uh, 4, 2. So now we're going to be at 12 comma 2. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, comma 2, right about there. So we can see we did the horizontal uh, stretch first. Now all the values are going to be shifted, not positive 3, but the opposite, left 3. So this point's going to be 1, 2, 3 right here. This point's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3 right here. And this point's going to be at 1, 2, 3 right about there. But what you can see is we're getting the exact same uh, graph. It's just that the process of getting to that graph was a little bit different. The order of uh, the transformations was different. Okay, example three, we're going to work with f of x equals x squared. This is the parabola graph that you're familiar with. But what I want to show you now is how to use a table to get the final coordinates of you know, your new function here, g of x. So g of x equals 2 times 1 half x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. So the question is, is what do we do first as far as transformations? Well, you can see that we don't have that b value factored out. It's actually just like this form here. So what that tells us is that we have to do our horizontal shift first. So you can see our b value is 3. Minus 3 actually is going to take this graph, it's going to shift it right 3 which means that we're adding 3 to the x-coordinates. So what I'm going to do is I just took these uh, parent function coordinates here, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, etc., just with this equation here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add 3 to the x-coordinates. So that's going to make this uh, positive 1. That's going to make this positive 2. That's going to make this 3, 4, 5. But the y values are going to stay the same because this is just uh, shifting to the right 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the horizontal stretch and compress. This is our b value. Remember it has the opposite effect. It looks like you're multiplying by 1 half. You're actually multiplying by the reciprocal 2 over 1. So this is actually going to be a horizontal stretch, which means that we're multiplying the x-coordinates by 2. 
So now instead of being at one, we're gonna be here at two, four, six, eight, and 10, but the Y values are gonna stay the same. Now, we're gonna go focus on the A value here. The two actually has the effect on the vertical component. It's gonna multiply the Y values by two. It's a vertical stretch. So the X values are gonna stay the same, two, four, six, eight, and 10, but the Y values are gonna be doubled. So this is gonna be eight, two, zero, two, and eight. The last thing we wanna do is this K value here, which is gonna shift it up one, so it has the same effect if it's positive one up one, if it was negative one, it would go down one. So that means we're gonna add one to all the Y values since it's shifting in the vertical direction. So this is gonna be nine, three, one, three, and nine, but the X values are gonna stay the same, two, four, six, eight, and 10. All you have to do now is plot these points and you're gonna have your new transformed quadratic function. Okay, so it sounds like you guys are really enjoying this video and if you like my teaching style, I have a lot more information regarding Algebra 2 topics in my Algebra 2 video course. So definitely check that out if you need help with your Algebra 2 studies in your class. It goes through a typical Algebra 2 curriculum and it goes into a lot of detail, similar to this video, uh, but covering all the different topics in Algebra 2. But let's go through another example. This one we're gonna be talking about reflections. And this is also one that sometimes confuses students. But here we're working with f of x equals three to the x. You can see this is an exponential growth function. But now we're gonna look at two different versions. We've got this one, version A, where we have three to the negative x plus one. Here we have version B, three to the negative quantity x minus one. So again, the question is, is what do we do first? What do we do second? What do we do third, et cetera? Well, when you look at it in this form, you can see that, as opposed to this form, you can see that the negative is factored out. Okay, so when it's factored out, that's this form here. This one is not factored out, it's this form here. So what we have to do for this letter A is we actually have to do the shift first. So you can see this plus one is actually gonna shift this graph left one. So all these key points here, I'm just gonna shift left one. So we're gonna go here, this one's gonna be over here, and this one here is gonna be right on the Y axis. So that's gonna be step number one shifting left one. Now the negative x, what it does is it makes all the x values the opposite, which reflects it over the y axis. So what you can see now is that this point here is gonna reflect, it's gonna be over here at positive one. This point, instead of being here at negative two, it's gonna be at positive two. And this point here is right on the y axis, it's gonna stay there. Okay, so that's gonna be our final uh, graph right here. Okay, now for letter B, what we're gonna do because the negative one is factored out, that's this first form here, we're actually gonna reflect over the y-axis first. So this point, instead of being at one, three, it's gonna be here at negative one, three. This one's right on the y-axis, so it's gonna stay where it's at. And then this point here is gonna be right there. So all I did is reflect over the y-axis. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow that up by shifting not minus one, but right one. So each of these points is gonna shift right one. This is point's gonna be right here. This point's gonna be right here. And this point's gonna be right there. So you can see we're ending up with the exact same graph. It's just a matter of how do we get to that? You know, what steps do we do first, second, third? So if you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that Mario's Math Tutoring is all about making learning math less stressful for you so that you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. If you wanna learn more about transforming parent functions, check out the other video I did right there, and I'll see you over in that video.